we just I started piecing the show together, not from what it even was about. I was like, I want to shoot a show that feels like short films, that's done with beautiful lenses, and that we shoot it, uh, you know, carefully, um, like an old film crew. Um, I started thinking about the kind of people I would like to see in the show before I had written anything. And, uh, and then I started piecing together little scripts, and I ran out and shot one thing, and then stopped, and then wrote more. And I just kind of created it with, I just took the money and just threw it at objects and people. <laughs> and I shot way more than I needed. I shot like something like three episodes worth of material and uh, crunched it down to the pilot and uh, gave it to them. And they had no idea what they were going to see. They just pressed play and they watched it. And that's a great trick, because usually they have to read the scripts, then they do rewrites, and they're sick of it. But they had no idea what the show was. And they watched it, and they said, yeah, let's keep doing it. And they gave me 300000 for the series per episode. That's it. I mean, I get paid out of that. I get paid Writers Guild minimum for the script, uh, DGA minimum for directing. Um, and I pay myself way, very little as an editor. Uh, and um, that's, I just make the show. And they don't, when we started doing the series, um, John Langraff said, well, can you tell, you gotta tell me something. And so I, I said, uh, well, let's have a beer and let's talk about it. So we just sat and I told him three ideas for the series and I didn't do any of them. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, here's three ideas. I may or may not do them. And he said, sounds fine. <laughs> and so that was it. Every week <clears throat> we would take the money and we'd make shows. And also, I, they, I had the freedom to spend more on some shows than others. Some shows are, cost half a million bucks. Some shows cost 150, um, depend, depending on the subject matter. Um, they didn't know who was in the show. I was more able to get interesting actors, people like Ricky, because they didn't know Ricky was on the show. Mm -hmm. They just, they watched and they go, how the fuck did he get Ricky Gervais? <laughs> <laughs> just watch it. That's Matthew Broderick? How the fuck? And they just, you know. So, and that was, to me, that was, it's much more fun to me Doing the show this way is a lot of pressure. It's a huge amount of pressure. Because if the show stinks, if I give them an episode that stinks, then I have to do it over again. Mm. I mean, that's the, that's the deal that we have. They have a right to say, yeah, we just didn't like that one. And then I have to make another one. Yeah. So it's a lot of pressure. And also, I want to I wanna keep that freedom. I knew that if two episodes in, if the shows were weak, they would have come. It wasn't a contractual right. <laughs> It was just a verbal agreement. It remains a verbal agreement between me and John Langraff that I have that freedom. It's not a deal that I have. I mean, th that deal doesn't exist. They would <laughs> never put that on paper. That would be suicide. It I sounds mean, it would like be... it comes out of petty cash. Yeah, it, it does. Just opens up his it top does. Door and... It's literally, my show is so cheap that the advertisers don't know what they're advertising on. That's how it's so cheap to pay for that people will advertise on it without knowing what's, what's in it. I, mm. you know. Red stripe beer doesn't give a shit <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs>